Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips have a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Take it to go out today, see things came out today, see things are on sale. Now today though, new release-wise, some of the bigger things that are coming out today is The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. Uh, that's releasing today, as well as Peter Rabbit 2. I believe there's a few other things as well coming out. Uh, also though, at the end of this video, is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. So definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video as well. But anyway though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. So we'll take a look here in the front and everything and see, you know, what they have. This one usually has a couple things over here. Yeah, the, the stuff is over here in this section. Let's see if they change anything out uh, over here and everything. But from looking at it, it seems to be all the same stuff. I don't see anything new changed out right here. Because Hitman's uh, wife's bodyguard, that was last Tuesday. Stuff like that. Let's just check here on the side just in case. But no, I don't see anything else different here. Let's see. Yeah, nothing else different over here, but we're head over to the actual section over there. And fingers crossed, hopefully, hopefully they have something out over there, but we will see. But we're heading over here though, and we'll see what they have. And it's funny, it's like I'm not seeing anything new here. Like I see like the spots for it. It's really crazy. I would have thought by now, because this location I don't normally go to, but I see the spots for it, like the Conjuring 3, 1999. Uh, Peter Rabbit 2, $24.99, $29.99 for the three film collection, and then $29.99 for the 4K. But I don't see any of them out in here or anything like that. It's very picked over. You see some of the stuff from last week, like the Misfits and stuff like that, but none of the new stuff at all from today out. But yeah, there was nothing in there today. It was crazy. Like I went to a different Target, the one that I don't usually go to, but this is the one in a different area. And usually this one always has the stuff out. Like I've, I don't think I've ever gone to this one and have not had the things on the shelves and stuff like that. So it's kind of funny. Uh, I probably should have gone to the other area, but I didn't want to go to that one because that particular Walmart, as you guys remember, like every single week, they never have anything at all anymore. So I end up coming to the one Walmart out this way. You know what I mean? But watch this week. This Walmart won't have anything out at all. We'll see see though fingers crossed though hopefully they have some stuff out because it's like I said it's just strange you really would have thought for sure they would have had the conjuring three on the shelf but you never know it's always so hard to tell with these things with movies in the stores having them out and all that kind of stuff but like I said gonna head over to uh, Walmart now and hopefully we'll have okay luck I'm not expecting everything to be out but hopefully some of the stuff that was out last Tuesday is out now that they didn't put out already and that kind of stuff but we'll see into Walmart we go yeah, well, it's crazy, guys. I, I was in the car for a while talking to the phone because I've been planning all this stuff for the shoot because I'm getting ready to shoot, start shooting Amityville Karen on Thursday. So it's really late now. It's like almost 7 o'clock, and there's nothing changed out at all. It's like all the same stuff from last week. I don't see. I see a couple things that I haven't seen out yet, like this one called Ish, If She Screams. That came out a couple weeks ago. So there's a couple like random ones in here, like Mount Adams. I don't remember seeing. I saw a couple ones over here that were from last week, like Shook, Absolute here uh, stay out of the attic and and these are some of the other ones but like when it comes to the new releases here I don't see any of them at all like you know I would have thought they would have had the conjuring uh, you know three out for sure but there's no conjuring three nothing changed whatsoever which is crazy I'm almost feeling like did I go out on the wrong day of the week and it's only Monday and I'm like I'm like wait, wait a minute am I confused or something but I'm like no it's Tuesday but it's just like nothing whatsoever changed but we're head over to Walmart though and hopefully I mean not at Walmart we'll head over to uh, Best Buy and hopefully they're gonna have some stuff out today because it's very strange to we haven't seen the movies anywhere today, so hopefully they have this stuff. So at least I have a thumbnail with um, you know, some of the, the the movies today. But we'll see. It's definitely a fingers crossed because I definitely do not have time to go anywhere else today because it's already so late and everything. But like I said, we shall see. Like wandering through the Breezers section, but we shall see though. We shall see. Yeah, and one thing that's really funny is, you know, sometimes I like do this funny thing where, you know, if Walmart doesn't have the new movies out in the section, I look in their red box machine. And I've done that like once or twice and it's like a little joke. And I go, oh, I look in the red box and see if, you know, the movies are in there. I'm going to go, well, I can't show them on the shelves in Walmart, but I can show them in the red box machine. But I looked in the red box machine and today nothing <laughs> there wasn't anything added in there there was no conjuring uh there was no peter rabbit 2 none of that stuff so it's almost like that walmart and the target too like i mean especially the walmart though it's like they definitely forgot today was tuesday <laughs> and you would have thought too a movie especially a movie like peter rabbit 2 that's the kind of movie that a lot of people would be going out and buying like parents and stuff like that so when you think about it too 
the amount of money that Walmart loses, you know what I mean? Like they're kind of killing physical media in a sense by not putting it on the shelves and stuff like that. I've gotten to the point where I'm getting so tired of what's going on with them. It's just like tiresome, you know what I mean? It's craziness. I still go in there because they do occasionally have stuff when they do weeks later and stuff like that. It's just crazy. Every week it's like the the subject that always comes up is the, the Walmart issues, Walmart conundrums. But fingers crossed we're going into Best Buy. I hope they got something out. Well, luckily enough, they had this stuff out in there. I didn't get much video. They were playing this really strange, like, looped techno music. It was like the, uh, the Party Boy music in Jackass. Like that, it was almost like Party Boy was going to come in there and start doing his dance. And it just kept going and going and going and going and going. I'm like, oh my god, what is this? What is this music? I've never in my life been in Best Buy and had them playing this sort of strange techno-y disco dance music. And I was like, okay, maybe that tracks me over. Right afterwards, right afterwards, another, another one that came in. It's like this is the day. Oh, but um, you know, in there though, uh, they did have the Conjuring, the Devil Made Me Do It, and, I, and they had the um, the Blu-ray of that one, and then they, I think the Blu-ray was twenty-two ninety-nine, and I believe the four K was twenty-nine ninety-nine. They also had a Bella Thorne movie in there, which I'm really interested in seeing, called Habit. If you guys have seen that one, let me know how Habit was and everything. Sorry, I didn't really get to go a whole ton of places today and everything. Like I said, I've been a lot of stuff going on with the production of Amityville Karen because I start shooting that movie on Thursday, so tomorrow is like the main day. I'm picking people at the airport and all sorts of stuff is going on so lots of stuff going on and stuff right now so very busy very crazy uh, everything like that that's why it's so late with the video and all that but anyway though guys let me know in the comments below though what you guys picked up on DVD Blu-ray or 4k if you guys end up going out today and picking up anything also let me know anything new that you guys are watch on streaming any new any new TV shows or any new movies or anything like that you guys have been watching as well and also too, let me know what you guys thought of the DVDs Blu-rays and 4k's that I review at the end of this video if you guys have seen them what you guys thought of them also if you guys you know guys plan I'm picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, now stay tuned for the brand new, brand new review. And the first one I got here is from Lionsgate. It's a movie here which stars Megan Fox, Bruce Willis, and Emile Hirsch called Midnight in Switzgrass. Uh, this was an interesting movie. This is basically, though, about Emile Hirsch's character who's this cop in this small town. And this guy ended up discovering this body of this girl that was, like, underneath of this bridge and stuff, like the overpass of this bridge. And it basically becomes this whole investigation. And Emile Hirsch's character is investigating it. And there's other, like, bodies that are showing up as well, of these other women that are killed. And this is one of those movies, too, where where you kind of know who the killer is. It's not like a mystery on that aspect because you're kind of seeing who it is throughout the movie, but it's one of those movies where it's they're trying to track down the killer. And it's basically, though, about, you know, Megan Fox's character and Bruce Willis's character who are both these FBI agents. And they're, like, looking for something as well, and they end up... I can't remember exactly who they were searching for, but they end up, like, connected with uh, Mille Hirsch's character who's, like, looking for, uh, you know, the murderer and everything. And it's basically, though, they end up together, and, and they're trying to figure out exactly what's going on as well and trying to get to the bottom of this to stop, you know, who's behind these murders and everything. But this was a really interesting movie. I thought this was really, really well done. Well acted from all around. I always love Emil Hirsch, too. He did a great job in this. Bruce Willis did a good job. Same with Megan Fox. But a really interesting, you know, thriller just kind of about, you know, trying to track down the serial killer and everything. And on here, though, this has, uh, feature-wise, has a director's commentary track as well as a trailer on this one. The next one here is from Lionsgate as well. This is a movie here called Jurassic Hunt. This was a fun movie. This is basically about, like, um, they like you know they they have like um, people can pay money to go and hunt uh, dinosaurs. So it's kind of like Jurassic Park in a sense, where instead of like going to Jurassic Park where you can see the dinosaurs, in this movie in this universe you can go and hunt the dinosaurs. So it's basically people that kind of go and like you know want to pay this amount of money to go and hunt these dinosaurs. So they go in there and they're like dinosaurs that were you know genetically mutated and stuff like that and brought back to life. And like that that's kind of how in, like I said people go and pay to you know hunt these dinosaurs. And it's one of those whole things about a group of these people together and some of them kind of have the skills for hunting and some of them do not and they're just people that have money that think that they can do this so it's basically them going out there they're dropped off in the middle of nowhere and it's like them you know trapped in there trying to figure out how they're going to get away from these dinosaurs where things go really really bad and everything it's a really really fun uh, movie like i said this one here is called uh, jurassic hunt uh, the next one here is one i wanted you guys to know is available this is from um lionsgate as well this is the complete uh, sixth season here of the show uh, fear the walking dead and this is a show i 
I've only watched a couple episodes of this show throughout the years, but this is basically a show that kind of, it connects in a sense to The Walking Dead, because it's like one of the, some of the characters that you see in The Walking Dead, but it kind of follows them before they got to The Walking Dead universe, or, or into The Walking Dead, like their characters before they got there, and stuff like that. That's essentially, you know, what it is, but it's basically, though, you know, people who are surviving with the zombie, you know, uh, that are going, you know, the zombies that are taking over and everything, it's them trying to survive and everything, but like I said, this is, of course, a different, you know, perspective on the whole thing, and like I said, you see some of the characters and stuff from The Walking Dead universe as well in this show, but this one has on here, though, feature-wise, this has commentary tracks on here, and the newest season of the show starts um, October 17th on, you know, AMC is when the new season of the show uh, comes back, and I'll show you guys, though, a look inside as well. It has a digital copy of the show, and then it has a thing on here, like The Walking Dead universe, because in The Walking Dead universe, there's, you know, The Walking Dead, the final season is going to be airing, you know, on the 22nd, and then, uh, you know, uh, Walking Dead, be, uh, World Beyond, that was the other, you know, kind of connecting show, and then Fear the Walking Dead, like I said, season seven starts in October uh, for that one, but it also includes the digital copy of the show, um, you know, as well. And the next one I got here is from Shout Factory, Scream Factory line. This is a really cool anthology horror film here called uh, Dark Stories. Uh, this one stars uh, Christina uh, Loken. It's basically, though, about her character who gets sent this really weird, uh, you know, she gets a package in the mail, she has no idea what it is, and she opens it up, and it's this really weird uh, doll, and she's like looking at it, and it's like, what is this thing? All of a sudden, right away, the second she opens up the package, the doll comes to life, it starts saying all these weird things, it starts laughing in this really weird way, and then, it, you know, basically the the uh, doll takes a knife and says, it's, you know, he's gonna kill her, and she's like, oh, no, 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 and then she, the doll's like, oh, I'm gonna go upstairs, I hear someone upstairs, and her kid is upstairs, and basically she says, listen, listen, don't do anything, uh, don't kill anyone, listen, I, if you, I'm gonna tell you these stories, so she basically tells these horror stories to this doll, so it's an anthology horror film with her telling these different stories, so then it comes back from one story, and then he says, oh, that one was all right, do you have any more like that one, and he's doing all the laughs and stuff like that, but there were some really, really cool segments on this one, and the one actor in here, too, was an actor who I was always a fan of, he's been in a lot of stuff, like he was in City of the Lost Children, uh, he was in Alien Resurrection, I was always a fan of that guy, so really cool to see him again uh, in this film, and this one has on here, though, feature-wise, it has a making of on all of the different uh, segments uh, on this one. The next one here is from Warner Brothers. They sent over a free copy. This one, let you guys know this one is available. This is one that I just finished watching now. And this is uh, The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. And this is the 4K Ultra HD edition of the film. It includes the 4K, the Blu-ray, as well as the digital copy of the film. Like I said, I just finished watching this one now. Uh, th I, this is, you know, these Conjuring movies are really creepy films. I remember the first movie, how much that one creeped me out. Especially, like, the, there's the one character, like, the the, the you know, the creepy thing that's in that movie where it's like over top of this bureau looking down, like this dresser, drawer dresser bureau thing, and something about that image in that first movie, that was, I don't know why, out of anything that was like to me that creeped me out, that thing creeped me out the most, that visual. I was very creepy. And then I remember in Insidious too, like that kid dancing to the like tiptoe through the tulips, that creeped me out as well. And it's not, it's not in this universe, but it's, you know, it, it, that that's like, it, it's similar though. But basically though, uh, this is, in the movie is following the Warrens, the characters, you know, who go and investigate, you know, possessions and hauntings and things like that, and they've been throughout all the films, and they've been, you know, the Annabelle films, uh, you know, I think they were in The Nun, uh, La, I can't remember if they were in La Jorona, uh, but it's basically, though, about, in this one, it starts off with them, in the very beginning, there, there's this kid that was possessed, and they're working on the exorcism going on and everything, and the, the one kid's older brother is there, and the uh, older brother, you know, basically says to the, you know, when the kid, his brother who's possessed, he says, you know, take me, you know, possess me, so the demon ends up going and possessing him. And it's essentially what ends up happening, though, is something happens, and the, the brother ends up getting arrested, and, like, it's just, it's what, what what goes on, though, is, like, they have to try and prove that what because of what he had done, this bad thing that he had done, was because he was possessed and everything, and it becomes this whole, you know, like, the, you know, the interesting thing about them trying to prove that, you know, he was possessed, and that was why that he killed somebody, and all these kind of things that had happened. It's a really, really interesting uh, movie. I This is, you know, but very creepy. It's not as creepy, though, as, you know, the first Insidious movie. That That is very hard to top, but there are some very creepy visuals in here and stuff like that, but it's basically, though, you know, the the one Warren, though, he ends up having a heart attack at the beginning of the movie, so he kind of has to be very careful with what he's doing now and everything, but it's a really, really well done, uh, super creepy movie. Looks great here on 4K. It has a bunch of different featurettes here, you know, on the film. It has an in-depth look at this true story that inspired the film. It has on here, The Occultist Meet the Terrifying New 
addition to the Conjuring universe. Has some stuff on here about the exorcism scene on here. And then it also has DC Horror Presents the Conjuring, the, uh, the Lover number one. And that has a uh, video comic that goes deeper into the Conjuring universe as well uh, on this one here. And the next one I got here is from Warner Brothers as well. They sent out a free copy of this one to let you guys know that this one is available. And this is the um, 4K Ultra HD edition here, which includes the 4K, the Blu-ray, as well as a digital copy of the film uh, In the Heights. And this one here is from the uh, director. Uh, the director of this film also directed Crazy Rich Asians, which I really love that movie. And also, this is from, you know, um, the creator of Hamilton, you know, Lin-Manuel Miranda acts in the film. He also wrote all the music in the movie. And the thing about this movie, too, is it's a musical, and it's a huge musical. Like, the, the it's probably like when, I, when you think of, like, the set pieces of the amount of people in these musical numbers, it's like it's probably some of the biggest and some of the that they have together and everything, and an elaborate, cho you know, choreography and stuff like that for these scenes and these huge dances and stuff like that in the movie. But it's basically, though, it all takes place in New York. It's following this one guy who works at a, um, like, a convenience store. And it's basically, it, it starts with him in the beginning of the movie telling the story when he's living in the Dominican Republic on this island. He's kind of telling this story, like, his life story and everything about where he grew up and all this kind of stuff. And it's basically him telling the story about where he lives, his community, and all the kind of the people who are around him. And it's all, the, as I said, it's all done as a musical. You find out about this one girl that he likes and the, like the other people in the community. He follows them around. And you just kind of find out all the stuff that they're going through. But it's a really, really well done musical. Really, really great music on this one. And has on here, though, feature-wise, this has um, the uh, Making in the Heights documentary on here. Uh, has on here the In the, in the Heights sing-along. Two of the film's most spectacular musical moments are enhanced by colorful karaoke-style lyrics on this one uh, here as well. And 4K-wise, though, this one looks great here on 4K. But really, really well done a uh, musical film here. The next one here, this is um, from uh, Universal. And this is one I had not seen uh, the first film. So this is Universal and DreamWorks. But I had not seen the first movie. I, I cannot remember when the first one came out. But this is uh, Spirit Untamed here. And like I said, this is the sequel film. And it's basically about this girl who ends up going to stay at this ranch. And she ends up basically that's you know where her mother was, and it, it's essentially though it's about you know what happened to her mother, and she's and wants to kind of like um, she meets the horse on the rancid spirit, and it's basically about her having this friendship with the horse because when she first gets her she doesn't know if she wants to go to this ranch and everything, but then she kind of like becomes friends with this horse and kind of like it's a connection to her mother in a sense. So essentially though she wants to go and you know rescue the horse and get the horse off of the you know uh, where, where the horse is living and, and get back to its the horse's family and everything. So it's an adventure film and everything. A very, very fun film. Like I said, I had not seen the first movie here, but like I said, one of you guys, this one uh, was available. And this has on here, though, feature-wise, some featurettes on here. It has sing-along videos, uh, deleted scenes on this one here uh, as well. The next one here, this is from a Paramount, and this is really cool. I love this red case that this is in, and this is the brand new uh, collection here. This is the Friday the 13th, the 8 movie collection here on Blu-ray. And this one has on here a bunch of different special features. I'll go through some of the features that are on this set, and I'll show you guys a little look inside uh, as well. But this has, like, the, like I said, the first eight films up to Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Manhattan. Out of all the films, though, the my favorite one to watch, I would say, is probably Friday the 13th, the final chapter. That that one, like, you know, it's, like, probably, like, to me, like, the, I don't know, I, for some reason, that one. And then I always love to watch Jason Takes Manhattan because I love, like, the idea of Jason in the city and stuff like that. And I wish there was a little bit more of him in the city. But, you know, I, I, I always loved that one just because, like I said, I thought it was a kind of cool him in the city and it was like, a very different setting and everything but if you, of course if you guys have never seen these movies it's basically about the character of Jason Voorhees you know who's going on a you know and killing people and stuff like that and he just keeps coming back again and again and again uh, throughout the films and everything like that but they are really really fun slasher films I've watched these movies th so many times throughout the years some of the features here that are on here though I'll go through some of them on here it has like um the final cuts on here Tales of Friday the 13th it has the um Let's see on here, uh, a whole bunch of different featurettes on here, Lost Tales of, of uh, from Camp Blood, Part 1, 2. So it has all the Lost Tales ones on here. It has a bunch of different, um, like on, let me see some of the other ones, The Making of Friday the 13th, The New Beginning. So it has lots of different stuff, slash scenes on um, Friday the 13th, Jason Lives. Uh, like I said, though, tons of features on here, lots of different deleted scenes, slash scenes, gag reels on uh, Jason Takes Manhattan and everything like that, commentary tracks, The Lost End ending on Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Inside, too, I'll show you guys a look inside, too. It has, like, the digital copies, like I was mentioning, of the films as well. And here's a look inside at the case. And, like, I, I love this red case that this is in. 
But, you know, very cool uh, release here. You know, I have a lot of different editions of the Friday the 13th film. Always love these films. These are films I've watched these movies so many times throughout the years. I feel like the first time I ever saw these movies, too, I remember, like, taping them off of TV and then watching, like, these really, like, as a, like a kid, probably, like, eight or nine years old, I remember taping them and watching, like, these really bad, like, censored TV edits of the movies. So I remember, like, that was the first way I saw every one of the movies. I remember taping them off. They had, like, a marathon of them. And I, I think I taped every single one of them on, like, one of those VHS tapes. They would go for, like, eight, I don't know, maybe I didn't get all of them. I, but I used to set tape in, like, the eight-hour mode so I could tape as many things as possible back in the day and everything. But, like I said, really cool release here of the first eight uh, Friday the 13th uh, films here on Blu-ray in this cool red case. And the next one I got here is from Paramount as well. It's a movie here called The Misfits, which stars Pierce Brosnan, uh, Nick Cannon, Tim Roth. And this is a fun movie. This has got kind of like an Ocean's Eleven kind of vibe. It's basically, though, about Nick Cannon, who's with this group of these people who are all these these all these all criminals that are working together. And they go and they, they kind of see themselves as like the modern day Robin Hood. And they're going and like, and like robbing from the rich, giving to the poor. They go and like rob from like safety deposit boxes from people that have like a lot of money hidden there and like jewelry and stuff like that. And it's kind of stuff, too, that people wouldn't be able to like get back to because like if you put in a safety deposit box, like it's like kind of like it's like the risk you take putting it in there and stuff like that. So it's basically like that's what they're doing. But then they come up with this thing that they want to steal this money from this bank, from the, all, all this money that's inside this prison. And they end up kind of roping in Pierce Brosnan's character and kind of bringing him, trying to get him into, into the group because they need him to do this. And it's it's got like a, this kind of fun, kind of also even like a Mission Impossible vibe to it in, in a way too because they're doing stuff and they're like having to figure out how they're going to like infiltrate the prison and all this kind of undercover stuff they have to do and all this kind of crazy stuff that goes on. But definitely a very, very fun movie here. Like I said, this one is called The Misfits. The other one here is from Paramount as well. Um, this is also from Nickelodeon. And this is Are You Afraid of the Dark? The Curse of the Shadows. And this is the newest Afraid of the Dark series here. And this one here, it was this is like, it, you know, it's a done as a mini series. So I think it was, uh, it was, uh, uh, six different episodes on here that you know go into the uh, mini series because the last one I think it was only uh, two episodes on the last series of this one I'm pretty sure I can't remember for sure but I'm pr I think it was like that I think this was a little longer uh, this series of the Fray of the Dark that they did of course the original series of it was uh, you know just ep different the kids telling stories each episode and then they would be like a different tale each episode but when they did the um, the I think it was the tale of the silver scythe which was like the Fray of the Dark kind of movie that they did I think in the early 2000s uh, th this is done kind of more in that style where it's like done more of as a movie I, I do think it'd be kind of cool though if uh, Nickelodeon will do you know take the kids from this series and actually do it uh, for the next season or at some point in time when they actually just have them telling the stories because I think that'd be really cool to have a, a, a real old school anthology series of, of this uh, series done where it's every episode is a different tale because I, I always like that I really like you know 20 minute uh, horror stories and stuff like that I love Goose Bumps. Uh, that's why I love the original series and stuff like that as well. The, the, the new series is really cool as well, but like I said, I, I love the original <laughs> the original way of presenting the stories where it was just different tales each episode. I think people would probably like that as well, seeing, because there's not really a lot of anthologies like that anymore that are done that in that way, uh, but you know, still really fun. It has the same vibe of the original series. It has this very similar kind of feel uh, to it as well. Uh, like I said, there's one that you guys know that this one was available as well. Uh, the next one here is from uh, ITN. It's a movie here called Claw. And this was a fun movie. This is like about like a guy that has like, um, you know, it's people that are going through this ghost town and everything. And, and and basically, though, there's a guy out there who has, like, his own dinosaur out there that he has, that he's, like, you know, brought to life, and it's out in the middle of nowhere and everything. And basically, though, the dinosaur ends up getting loose, and it's basically going and, like, you know, causing all kinds of problems, and then, you know, escapes from the enclosure and is coming after people and everything, and they have to figure out exactly what they're going to do, and that people have to kind of work together to survive this creature and everything coming after them. But it's a really, really fun, uh, you know, killer uh, dinosaur movie here. Here. Uh, the other one here is from uh, this is, was from a High Flyer uh, Films. And it's a movie here called Bram Stoker's Van Helsing. And this is basically though about this woman that was ended up you know um, bit by uh, a vampire. And it's basically though about you know them trying to figure out what they're going to do and they bring in uh, you know Bram Stoker. I mean they bring in Van, Van Helsing who's like the vampire hunter, and he basically goes in there to try and track down the vampire that bit this woman to try and you know make it so she can be turned back to human again 
you know, the, the legend of vampires and stuff is the only way to bring someone, if someone was bit by a vampire, the only way to bring them back is to kill the original vampire. So they like Lost Boys and all those kind of stories. So that's basically what it is. They have to try and track down and kill the original vampire uh, in order to bring her back and everything. And this one has on here, though, feature-wise, it has a commentary track on here as well as a director's uh, interview on this one. Uh, the next one here is from um, Kino Larber, and this is from the Kino Studio Classics line. And this is a really fun movie. I remember this movie. It always creeps me out, too. There's something, like, creepy about the, the, the concept of this and people, like, squatting in this weird old theater. Uh, and I, I like these kind of things. And I always liked, like, Vincent Price. Vincent Price has been, was on so many cool movies. Uh, the Mad Magician was one that I always loved. Of course, House on Haunted Hill, uh, Everett Scissorhands. Uh, but the, the amount, tons and tons of things. So this is a movie here called uh, Theater of Blood. And this is basically, though, about like this weird theater troupe that's like squatting in this old theater and they put on these peculiar, weird plays and they're going and killing people. And you kind of find out why they're doing this and what is going on. And they're like, they're just so strange the way they're acting. They're killing off people that were involved in this other theater and like all these different things that are going on. But it's basically like he's like the ringmaster of these groups and there's all these like strange, almost like possessed acting people that are at this theater troupe and they're acting so unhuman and weird and everything but it is it's extremely creepy movie it has on here though a commentary track on here with the screenwriter and producer on here it has a commentary with film historians on here uh trailers from hell on here a tv spot radio spots as well as a theatrical trailer on this one the other one this is one i had never seen before and it's a movie with stars burt reynolds this is from kino uh you know as well from the studio classics line this is a really fun movie and the creatures in here are so like wacky looking uh, and it's called Skull Duggery. Skull Duggery. I think that's how you spell it. Skull Duggery. And this is like just like one of those movies when you're watching, you're just thinking like, I'm sure Bruce Willis was like, I mean, not Bruce Willis, Burt Reynolds when he was like on the set of this, like just had this like look on his face, just like this is like such a strange movie. But it was like such a fun, strange, strange movie about people that were like going on this expedition to the to the rainforest and everything, and they end up like coming and finding these like this tribe of these like weird kind of like um. They're sort of like like humans, like kind of like Planet of the Apes, but not exactly. But they're like weird looking kind of creatures that are out there and everything. And it's basically though them about finding you know out there and everything and what ends up going on and stuff like that. That's basically what it is. But it's just like a really fun adventure movie. Like I I had a fun time with this movie. This has on here a uh, commentary track on here with film historians as well as a theatrical trailer. Uh, the other one here this is from uh, from Acorn Media International, and this one is a um, this I. Check this one too. This is a region free release, so you guys can watch this particular edition in any US player as well. And this is one I was really interested in seeing called Scare Me. And this one is also a Shudder original. This one, you know, is on Shudder as well. And this is basically, though, about a group of these people. Uh, this one guy who goes out to a cabin, he's basically out there to try and write and trying to get away and everything. And he goes out there and he ends up like, um, meeting this one girl out there. And then he kind of like starts talking to this girl and she kind of starts to come over and starts hanging out and everything. And they, they try and do this stuff where they try and scare each other. So it's them trying to like tell each other these stories and doing all these weird stuff to try and scare each other. And it's one of those things where it all goes throughout the night and things get weirder and weirder and weirder and stranger and stranger as it goes along and everything. It's a really fun movie. I, I really like this one. This has one here, a commentary track on here, director and cinematographer uh, commentary, interviews with the cast, behind the scenes photo gallery on here, uh, has outtakes, a music video on here uh, as well. The next one here, this is one that I, I'm very very interested in the, in the story of this movie and if any of you guys anyone sees this review that was involved in the production of this movie like leave a comment or message me on Facebook I'm just curious about the history of this movie and what happened and why it's just coming out now and this is a movie here which stars Eris Spears you know who was from um, uh, you know Mad TV and it's called Higher Ed now this is a movie you know it has a 2021 copyright but this movie was shot in 2000 the year 2000, I think it was, I think the t copyright on IMDb is 2001, so I'm pretty sure it was probably shot 2000, or even, could have even been 1999, who knows. But this is a movie that's just been released now, the first time. Uh, you can tell that something had happened in a few places in this movie, because there's a few places where uh, you could tell they had no coverage on scenes at all. Uh, and then there's a couple scenes, too, when, like, the one character had this really wacky voice, it was like, well, tell me 
everywhere you gotta go. And then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden the effect is gone. And it's back again. There's just strange stuff, and it's, but it's basically about this guy who goes to college and he's trying to like just go through school and everything and do well and not like you know have any problems or not do drugs or anything like that. And that's basically what it is. It's just him there going through school and then he meets the one girl that he likes and stuff like that. And he has a lot of problems and stuff. And uh, it was a really fun movie. It's like one of those movies. It was like a total lost movie, which I loved. It was one of my favorite like things I watched a long time because it's just a really fun movie. It was like kind of like a movie like How High and those kind of films. But like I just don't understand what happened. I mean like I don't know if they didn't finish the movie. Uh, you know what I mean? Or it, so, there was some kind of a weird legal thing that had happened in this movie that lasted like 20 years and like they didn't want to sell it or something like that. I, like I said, I have no clue. It's a really interesting thing. I don't know if it ever came out in another country before or this is like the very, it just finally was finished. Like I said, I would love to know the story behind it. I, I really would on this one. Uh, the next ones here are all from um, Gravitas Ventures. And this is one here uh, called I Without a Face. And this is an interesting movie. This is like, they says like a modern take on Rear Window. And it's about this guy though, who's like a guy, he like doesn't really leave his house much and stuff. He's always at home. And he like starts hacking in webcams and like watching these girls. And he like, he almost sees himself. He's like, he's like the guardian angel. These girls and like watching them. He's like telling people about, oh, I watch this. This is what I do. And I, he's basically like, he kind of lives his life just watching people. And basically what ends up happening though, is he ends up seeing something, you know, happen. And he sees something that he basically believes one of these girls had killed somebody. And it becomes him kind of a obsessed with the whole thing no one's believing him but then like something's going on with these people like starting to realize that he's watching and it becomes this whole big thing about him trying to stop and everything it's a really interesting movie it's a definitely a different take on doing the whole idea of rear window where it's instead of just looking out the window you're looking at somebody through the webcams and then you're seeing these things happening and then you have to figure out what you're going to do and how to help these people and everything but an interesting take on the whole thing the other one here and this one was a an interesting film here this is one called too late and this is about this girl who works uh, for this guy? He's basically like this assistant uh, to this guy who does what was it like? I think he was like a magician. I can't. Was I think he was a magician? I'm totally blanking on. I think he was a magician or a stand-up kind of guy or something like that. And basically, though, she's working for him, and he's really like. Um, like very like hard to deal with and everything and he's very controlling and she just no I don't know why am I thinking of a magician he's a stand-up comedian <laughs> he's a stand-up comedian and basically though you know he kind of runs this thing and he's like the sort of the head MC guy and he has people that come in and everything and there's some stand-up comedians that are in here too and some comedians like Fred Armisen is in here the one actress who was in uh, Road Trip is in the movie and basically though you know uh, she uh, wants to be a stand-up comedian as well who works for this guy and she never gets to go on he never gets to put her on and everything like that and it's basically about her trying to figure out how she's going to get away and like she wants to leave and everything get away from this guy and he's just going to make her life a living hell and it deal it goes in some crazy directions with what happens in this movie but a really really cool movie like i said it goes in a direction you're not expecting uh, the other one here is from gravitas ventures as well this is one here called love spreads and this one has in here this uh you know alia shalcat i never know how to say her last name uh you know it has eliza gonzalez in the movie it's basically though about this band that's together and they're you know they're doing their second album it's kind of like you know the challenges of when you know you had a great success with your first album they're now together trying to put together the second album and they're having a whole lot of problems and it's kind of about them trying to you know dealing with problems with the manager and dealing with all these other kinds of problems and they're having like disagreements with each other and just a lot of problems and it's all about the co the whole going on about them trying to have success with the second album doing anything they can to make this successful dealing with a lot of you know problems internal kind of problems and stuff like that that are going on and everything uh, the other one here is from Gravitas Ventures as well and this is one here uh, called Abducted and this is basically though about you know this um this boy whose like sister had gone missing it's kind of like that, you know. How he, there's no, he has no clue what had happened to her and everything like that. And he, but what's happening though is he starts having these weird sorts of visions, and these visions of his like his sister and all these creepy type of things. And then he's starting to believe that he's seeing like visions of things that are happening to other people around. And he starts to think that he can kind of help people. And it's basically though about him trying to figure out exactly what these visions mean and exactly what has happened to his sister and like you know how these visions connect to his sister and everything. Like they said, these creepy things that he's seeing and stuff like that. But it definitely a creepy. 
creepy movie here. Like I said, this one here is called Abducted. And the last one from Gravitas Ventures is one here called Ellie and Abby. And this is one I really like. This is that movie, uh, it's basically about this girl who falls in love with, the, basically these, you know, their first love and this girl falls in love with this girl at school. And it's kind of about like, she doesn't know how to like to tell her parents and it's kind of like a coming out type film. But then at the same time, when she's trying to go through this and coming out uh, to her, for her friends and everything like that, her dead aunt kind of comes back who was a lesbian and her dead aunt kind of comes to basically try and help her from beyond the grave through the whole navigating the whole process and everything of coming out and all that type of stuff. But this is a really good movie here. Like I said, this one here is called Ellie and Abby and Ellie's Dead Aunt. So you have to see uh, Ellie and Abby and Ellie's Dead Aunt is the full uh, title uh, for this one. The next one here, this is from um, uh, Indican Pictures here. And this is a, a fun movie here called The Boonies. And this is like a, you know, old school slasher style film out in the woods and everything. Uh, the one actress in here too, Jess Aller, uh, I was in the movie called uh, Massacre Academy with. And this is a movie here, it's basically though about... Um, a group of people who are going out into you know the woods and stuff like that and it's it's essentially though about you know they're going out into the woods and then like there's some kind of a crazed person out there that is attacking the campers and stuff out there like i said it's a total throwback slasher film it's basically though about the people who are out there trying to survive and stuff like that why this it's got kind of like a wrong turn kind of vibe to this movie here but this is a cool one here and this one has on here trailer as well as behind the scenes uh on this one and the next one I got here is from New Blood Entertainment. It's a movie here called Demented. And this one stars Felissa Rose, uh, Ari Lehman, uh, you know, also has Bret Hart in the movie as well. And this is one I was really interested in seeing. This is basically, though, about this guy who's like this, you know, it's, he's basically kidnapping women and taking them and like, you know, tying them up in this like weird room. And he's basically broadcasting on the internet where he's like torturing these women and all these kind of crazy things are going on with this guy. And it's basically with Felissa Rose's character who is this, um, you know, invest police investigator investigator who's in, in you know talking to people trying to get to the bottom of what had happened and she's interviewing this one guy who was like one of the first people like the last people that saw these people had gone missing and like the, she's trying to see what what he knows and if he has any kind of connections to this kind of stuff as well but it's essentially though about this killer and it, go, it has all this kind of crazy stuff that goes on as well it's hard to explain but really pretty cool film it has on here though a whole bunch of different features it has a theatrical trailer has music videos like Ari Lehman a uh, first Jason what uh, he has a song on here there's this one cool song too of this guy wearing like this like kind of corpse paint makeup on here too. It was a kind of a really cool song. It also has on here though uh, cast interviews as well as deleted scenes uh, on this one. The last two ones are ones here that I just want to let you guys know were available. And these ones are both from uh, Mondo Macabro. This is one here which is a movie that stars Paul Nache called The French um, The French um, Frenchman's Garden. And this one has on here though a brand new 2K tra uh, sorry brand new 4K transfer of the film. It has an interview on here with Paul Nache. It has a commentary track on here with Troy Herworth on here. It also has optional English subtitles on this one uh, and on here too uh, and the other one here that I want you guys to know is available is one called um, is it called Silly Silip uh, Daughters of Eve here. Like I said, this is another one that I just want to let you guys know was available. And this one here is digitally restored from the original film negative, fully uncut. Uh, has interviews on here uh, so with the, some of the actresses and well as the director on here. Has a commentary track on here and also has on here Tours of English or Talanark Audio on here. Uh, and this one here as well. Like I said, just want to let you guys know these ones are both available from uh, Mondo Macabro. But anyway though guys, that was all for the review portion of this video. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, uh, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching subscribing and I'll see you guys later. Bye.